What's up you guys, Henry Gracie, Hito and Gracie here at 511 Development Center in Irvine, California to discuss some critical defensive tactic techniques pertaining to weapon retention. The most significant difference between a street fight between two civilians and a fight between a law enforcement professional and a suspect is the introduction of the duty belt and all the weapons that the officer is carrying. The challenge is that oftentimes the subject will attack the officer, the fight goes to the ground against their will and now they're in total survival mode. And if that moment is the first time that the officer has been on their back against someone trying to hurt them, they're in for a very unpleasant surprise. This is called the guard, okay? The guard is the secret weapon of Gracie Jiu Jitsu. For you. Yes. But yet it's everybody's worst nightmare because the person in my position wants to punch Ooh, you in the face, yes. punch the body. And if you don't know how to use the guard and how to maintain and manage the distance to avoid these dangerous strikes, they can easily knock you out. So we want to address some very simple principles of punch protection, but equally important, the weapon retention concepts from the guard as well. First principle, manage the distance, manage the damage. I have to make sure that this is not possible for the, for the suspect in this situation. So I have to get up, gain control of the head, pull the head to the support side, and on the gun side, overhook the arm and gain control of the tricep. Reach my weapon, please. No deal. He can't. Punch my face over here, please. Can't. Uh, my head is way too close. You're pulling my head to the side. I can't reach the face for anything. And your grip on my tricep is very solid. Your elbow pinched tight to your body. My wrist is stuck. Okay, so whatever side the weapon is on, we're gonna pull the head to the opposite side, the support side, giving us best control on the strong side here where the weapon uh, would be uh, accessible for the suspect. Keeping control of this right here, everything's pretty good. The biggest concern is if the suspect does begin to kind of fidget with the holster here, I wanna disrupt his arm's accessibility to the firearm. Check it out. So we're here in stage one. If he inverts his arm, as soon as he does, Okay, focus here. Number one, uncross your legs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna curl my body in this direction using this hamstring. Turn, grab, bring my head to my hand. Once I grab it using this foot, I'm gonna extend my leg and extend him all the way off. The hand is clear off the weapon. I have great leverage on my head right here. Elbows inside his elbow versus being too spread where his elbow could possibly slip out. So we're under and we're stretching here north, keeping control. If he goes for the taser on the other side, with this leverage here, it's very powerful. I go inside, I S grip, because I can't reach my head on this side. Now I kick off the other one, all the way up, and I lock my guard, keeping my elbows flared nice and high. If he tries to slip his arms up and out and slip out the middle, I don't want that to happen. So instead of flaring, as he brings his elbows together, I ratchet down and control my elbows tight. But as soon as he reaches around for the weapon again, boom, I'm controlling and flaring the elbows, using my hips to keep him off the weapons once again. What I really feel is that you're using, you know, one-tenth of what I'm using. Energy Because I'm really reaching, reaching, reaching. I can feel that you're just, you know, holding, keeping your elbows open. And it's so exhausting for right. you to try for the weapon for that long. The more confident and well-trained an officer becomes in Gracie survival tactics, the greater the opportunity for them to resolve physical altercations with the absolute least amount of force necessary. We hope you learned some valuable tricks and we'll see you in the next one.